Welcome to CI in Under 5. My name is John Weezy, and in this episode, I want to talk to you about unification, specifically the mapping phase of unification, just to uh, help people that are maybe new to Customer Insights understand what exactly you're doing in mapping. So we're going to start out here on the mapping page. I've already ingested a number of data sources, and I have this uh, mapping already set up, but I want to walk through the process. So the first thing that you normally are going to do in unification, and specifically the map phase, is you're going to pick the entities that you want to appear in your unification or be used in unification. Now, these entities typically are going to be the entities that have um, demographic uh, information in them. So things like their name, their address, their email, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, because that's your what you're putting into your profile in the end, um, not transactions or purchases or website reviews or subscription information or anything like that, user logs, um, those types of things. Those are transactional, behavioral um, type of information, not demographic. So for our unified profile, we want dem demographics. We want name, address, email, phone number, contact info, that sort of thing. So the first thing you do is select those tables or those entities. And you can see here I've selected my loyalty, my e-commerce, and my subscribers, as well as my dynamics contacts. Now, the other thing I can do at this point is I can exclude fields that I don't care about. So if I say come into my contacts here, um, perhaps I don't want um, income to be included or I don't want customer satisfaction to be included or something like that. So, or even maybe created on, I really don't care here how it was created. Now, I, I can't uncheck that just because it's um, being used further down the line, but uh, some of these fields that aren't, I can uncheck. Uh, when you do it the first time, all of them are uncheckable uh, or checkable. Uh, but that's what you're doing here. You're, you're selecting the entity or table that you want and then which fields you want to include in that unified profile. Now, after you've done that, um, you're going to, for each table, set the primary key. And then you're going to uh, look at the columns, and they may be mapped. Um, so if we scroll back up, you'll see that we have intelligent mapping turned on. Intelligent mapping is on by default, and what this basically means is that the system is examining the data type or the data table that you bring in, the entity you bring in, and looking at the name of the field, as well as the first 50 rows of data, and determining if, uh, if it matches one of our known types. Now, today we match against 20 known types uh, at the time of this recording, at the end of June of 2021. Now, and in, in coming months, we're going to be expanding that to more uh, known types that we check for. So you see things like email address. That's a pretty easy one. We see the word email in it. We check the data and it match, matches the format for an email. We can then identify it as an email field. Uh, names are common ones. Uh, so first name uh, is pretty obvious that that's going to contain the first name. The data in the table probably looks like a name. Uh, so we call that uh, person that first name. Uh, same thing, gender. We see gender in the name. We see values that look like male and female. We put person.gender. Now, if we don't identify, let's see if we can find one here that does not identify it. So here's an email subscriber. Um, what probably happened is it saw email, but the data in it didn't look like an email, so it didn't type it as email. Now, if I happen to know that this is, in fact, an email, I can go in and change it to identity.service.email by just typing it in or by picking it out of the list. So you can see there's lots of them in the list that I can pick from. Um, but I can also just type it in. So I can create my own type by just typing in the name of the type that I want it to be. So that's setting that. Um, other things to know here, these fields are searchable. So if I come out here, I can search for the name of a field. If I have lots of fields, um, I can filter uh, to specific data source. I can also... Um, Card that change. I can also do things like, um, you know, as I said here, I can actually type in what I want and it will find the things, or I can type in a new one. 
Now the other thing to note here about these types is these are used further down the line. So not to get too far into other things, but if I go to merge, these fields are then used to determine, the, the types are used to determine the fields that should be merged. And they also are used here to determine the field that shows up here. So if you don't have a full name, then you won't see it up here. Um, as well as city and state and that sort of thing. So depending on uh, what you're doing, some of those field types are used to determine what shows up. So that's a quick run through of the map phase of unification. Hope you enjoyed this episode and tune in again next time.